territories of the Kwantlen and the Katz peoples and invite all the settlers here to keep colonization in mind as we um, expose the systems of violence that are displacing poor and vulnerable people. Could you talk louder? I can't hear what you're saying. Um, we call this press conference to draw attention to the rent evictions that are happening at Esme Manor. In May, this building was purchased along with another building around the corner and eviction notices were immediately filed. We have questions about Gordy Robson's connection and the Maple Ridge Council's connection to these buildings because of the title permits that go back to uh, the address of his son's office. Um, rent evictions are a way for landlords to get around the limits imposed by the Residential Tenancy Act. What we're seeing is really superficial renovations done, in this case uh, potentially without a permit, making it illegal, so that landlords can uh, increase the rent and price out poor tenants. Um, we want to call on the NDP's election promise to end homelessness. Uh, we see homelessness as a problem caused by landlords, city governments, and provincial, ne provincial governments neglect. Um, the housing crisis is only getting worse. We are seeing more and more groups of people affected by this. Uh, and today we're going to hear from speakers at Esme Manor, as well as some of their supporters from the Anita Place Tent City. Um, so I'm going to start by calling up Bob and Gail, who are residents of the third floor of this building, which is being evicted. Um, they have to move up by tomorrow, but have nowhere to go. I don't really know what to say more than what she said because that pretty much tells the whole story. We have nowhere to move to. They don't allow, most buildings don't allow cats and we have a pet cat for 10 years. So, that's it. And we did have a place, uh, but we I went online and I got scammed out of fourteen hundred dollars. Mm. So we're uh, you know I wasn't used to having to look at that. It was pretty dumb, but I believed it, and so it, we went. We thought know, we'd be the first tenants out of here. Yeah, and so that's why we didn't do the thing in the fifteen days in June that we were supposed to do it because we would have been out of the building by June thirteenth. But when like we figured when we found out it was a scam, that was too late to put in uh, mm. the, you know the complaint against the. Uh, Again, for the arbitrator, so they, then so when we actually talked to somebody after, they said that you have to do it within 15 days. So. Mm -hmm. And since then, we have been looking, but I said everything is either too much money or most all of them don't want animals because they there's so many people needing places. So I guess you know they, the landlords and the owners can be picky because there's so many people ahead of you to get something. Thank you. Bob. How much rent are you guys paying here? We're only paying 750. 750. And what are the rents in the place? We moved in July oh. or January 16th, so I guess we would be able to pay 750 for a year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then they could raise the rent. But most of the places, right? uh, no, yeah, most places we looked at are 950 or 1,000 mm -hmm. now. You know, They're over 1,000. Yeah, most of them because so. it's you know that's the way it's gone up in the last year. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. To you. Thank you. So Bob and Gail highlighting the way that seniors are particularly vulnerable to online scams. As they said, they've lost $1,400 for a fake apartment that they saw online and that they simply have nowhere to go, that rents are too high and people do not have other options or are at grave risk of being homeless. Um, some of the residents in this building have lived there for almost 30 years. Um, if Jean, would uh, you like to say something? Well, uh, maybe I can... Oh, you got it. You don't want to go through. No, she can't get out. Oh, yeah, I could wheel you. Yeah, just move over the mic. Her brakes are on. We've got time here. Oh, there you go. <laughs> no, no, it's not. Sorry. What do you expect will happen if you're I, uh, evicted? Well, I, unless I can find a place of low rental, I'm also trying to get into a senior's home, but that I'm on a waiting list for that. But apparently, only to get in a low rental senior's home, somebody's got to die or go into a hospital or something. So I don't even know where I am on the list for that. How many years have you lived here? About 28, 29. And what is the rent that you're paying now? Uh, 780. When I moved here before, it was 500. Could you could you sort of tell us? 
us uh, who you are and what your story is here and, and what you sort of thought. Introduce us to who you are and what your name is. My name is Jean Stewart. And then, could you just tell us what you, what, you, like, what you found out and what your story is? What do you mean what I found out? About uh, being around that, about being evicted. Well, they haven't got to the first floor yet. Yeah, they, I, no, they, they haven't. Floor, I haven't they're they're starting on yet. the third floor. Okay. No, it goes the third floor, second floor, and then the first floor. But everybody is going to be, but they're doing a floor at a time. And that we know exactly, nobody's told. We know, the owners don't speak to you. We don't, I've never met them, and they've never let us know what's happening. We just talk to the landlord. I mean, he's, you know, he does stay here. I'm very burnt. Do you have it? Okay. Yeah, I'm really burnt. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have June, right, another long-time okay. resident of Esme Manor. I think I'm okay. 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 So I think they like if you start with your game. Sure. That's fine. Okay, just tell me when. Should I hold this up? Is that okay? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, go for it. Just say when. When? I'm from the third floor, okay? Oh, yeah. I was one of the first. I was one of the first of the burning line at their June? Because you started at my end of the building. Guys, guys, not everybody at the same time, please. Thank you. Okay, June. Good morning. My name is June. I moved here today. It will be three years from Ontario. I moved here. It was a really hard decision for me to make. It took me a couple of years to make up my mind, but I wanted to be close to my family. And I absolutely love it in the village. I just love it. And um, I only found out a couple of months ago that we were going to be red evicted. And the only reason I found out was because somebody in the building, like nobody is telling us anything. It's all through rumors and guesstimating. The landlords supposedly were supposed to call a meeting, but they canceled. Somebody said because they were afraid of us, and um, I I love it here. I don't want to have to leave BC to go back to Ontario, even though the cost of living would be a lot cheaper in Ontario. And um, I'm going to start this week looking looking for a place. And I also have a cat, so that's a problem too. In Ontario, your uh, landlords can't deny you two pets. But in BC they can, so that could be a problem. Thank you. Okay, my name is Christina. I live on the third floor. I was one of the first people to be evicted from here. Um, I, they started at my end of the building. Uh, myself and the people across from the hall from me were the first two people to get their eviction. People across the hall, they were able to find a unit. Great! Myself and my husband, we own three cats and two caged animals. You show me one place here in Maple Ridge that is within uh, income assistance disability price range to be able to rent from, I'll move. Not a problem. I have no problems moving. My issue is there is 0.01% housing rate in the lower mainland. Not only Tri-Cities, lower mainland. There is the people that are left of the third floor. We have nowhere to go. The people that are getting their evictions on the second floor, they have nowhere to go. A friend of mine is on the second floor. She's a single mom. She has a baby under two years old. There's, she can't get it. There's a waiting list. There is a four-year waiting list for low-income housing. Myself and my husband try. She can't get it. There is nowhere that she can move to. Nowhere. I've looked. Not from just myself, but other people. There's nowhere for anybody to go. The owner and the one gentleman that works here, they have allowed myself the graces out of their heart 
to allow me to stay for the extra month of August. But I have to be, no ifs, ands, or buts, out be, uh, September 1st. So I don't have a place to go September 1st. Guess where I'm going? Tent City. Tent City's full. Guess what we're going to be doing? Opening up another one. <laughs> Maple Ridge doesn't want us to open up another one. Do something about it. Yeah. Do yeah, something yeah. about yeah, these yeah. owners <laughs> taking over our property yeah. and kicking us all out. You guys said that you were going to do something about it. Step up. Right. Do something. I've had enough. Woo. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So have you heard, as you've heard from many of the residents, people simply have nowhere to go except for the tent city. Um, we are calling on the NDP to fulfill their election promises and mayor and council to do something about to do something about how they're creating homelessness by allowing mm -hmm. landlords to rent evict people, uh, in this case, potentially illegally without a permit. Um, we have two residents of Anita Place Tent City who are here in solidarity uh, to show the relationship between people who are homeless and at risk of being homeless. Um, so I'd like to call up Chris. Chris? <clears throat> the government landlords and police are creating an enemy to fight by evicting tenants knowing full well that by doing so, they will have nowhere to go. This course of action will cause otherwise ordinary people to become homeless. The government has imposed many, many restrictions upon the homeless community. These include, but are not restricted to, living in an institutionalized facility such as a shelter, a hospital, or a jail. Thus creating a problem for them to solve thereby making them look like heroes. But I don't think so. <laughs> it's the same principle as an arsonist who puts out their own fire. The police would have us believe that homelessness is a crime. However, the crime isn't that people are poor. It's that innocent people are being forced to leave their homes without proper accommodations provided for them. It is the landlords who have committed a crime, a crime against humanity. Thank you. Woo! That yeah! Is. That is. Thank you, Chris. Um, Chris summing up for us so succinctly the way in which individualizing the promise, uh, the problem of homelessness detracts from the way that provincial and municipal uh, perm uh, behaviors create the problem in the first place. Um, Tracy is going to read a poem for us, just tying together all the strands that have uh, come together tonight. Hi there, my name is Tracy Scott, and um, I leave Tent City. I started the first Tent City as well, and, you know, this is really not cool, like, they're saying like that. You know, they don't like the homeless? Well, you're making more. You're creating more. For what reason? I don't understand. So, I wrote a poem, and it's called Mass Eviction and uh, Contradiction. Okay, there's some, some issues here that you'll, you'll catch when I read the poem to you. Does our town actually know how to be run? Or do they like to screw with us just for fun? They told us that they didn't want any more people in our tent city. They knew that they were evicting all these people. Okay. Um, we won't. We won't leave anybody out there. Not at all. Um, <laughs> um, we won't let them be eaten by the bylaw um, because that would be really shitty for them. It's, it's not okay. Okay. The property at, at stake, at stake at the moment, has the name Gord Robinson attached to it. Really? You see, he has a colorful past between you and me. <laughs> they keep it in the family and hidden agendas during his time. The money incentive to leave town. So that's all good, right? It's all fine. You're allowed to do that to people because they're, they're homeless. You're allowed to, you know, pay them to leave town, right? This is what he did. The money. Um, the name could be that of his son, no problem, although his companies have shares. The city and Gord only want us to leave town, but if we don't stand and fight, um, then we feel like we've let one another down, okay? The rental, building, the rental building at hand will affect many people in this town, 
many on fixed income, disability, and seniors. To this we frown. The issue we have at hand is painfully incompetent with its plan. With the mayor saying she's working on helping, but Gord's name somehow attached has, it, it's a bit of a contradiction with this mass eviction. Work on the building has already begun. So how can this be? We've heard there are no permits in place, you see. We'd be stopped and shut down if that was you or me. Or can, okay, do you, do you not have to apply for one? Can he not afford it or they not afford it? I don't know. Are you sure this is a legal eviction? Because we see lots of contradiction. Yeah. Um, sorry. The city backs its bylaws. It created for all of you. Okay. So what kind of message could this pen for the, the town, the city, and the country too? If it's a private contractor that did it in this fashion, what would happen? What would the town do? Think of the seniors that will be displaced. That, you know, they won't be able to afford it, yet alone find another place. This contradicts all that I was taught. Rich or poor, okay, it shouldn't matter. We're all born with the same equal rights. We should be treated as such as we grow old. We shouldn't be treated any different, whether we're a bum on the corner drinking, because you know, we all have different walks of life. Or whether we're the, the, the rich jerk in the three-piece Gucci suit. We should be treated equally. Talk to with the same respect level. We're all human. We just walk a different path, right? So that's all I had to say today. I just want everybody to understand that this isn't right. It's not right. You know? These, these people, they have pets too. I have a pet. I stayed homeless for so long. Why? Because nobody wants to take my dog. He's three pounds. Nobody wants to take him. Well, he's my baby and I'm not getting rid of him. He's my child to me. So I chose to stay out in the tent. And I chose to do it again. Because my building has issues about treating us like we're mentally um, incompetent or something. So I'm choosing to be homeless again. Because I will not live like that. 50 years old? No. No. So yeah, we're here to help you and stand for you and fight for you. You know, it's an easy. Thanks, Tracy. Yeah. All right. We want to call on Mayor and Council to be transparent about the relationship between Gord Robson and these illegal rent evictions happening to this building, as well as the other building that was purchased in May around the corner that appears to be from the same uh, owner. Uh, we see the solidarity between the tent city and the residents who are at risk of homelessness as the start of a new campaign to fight back against poverty and the insecure um, housing that people are experiencing in Maple Ridge. We want to call on the NDP to fulfill their election promises and we want to highlight the way in which marginalized populations are disproportionately affected by policies that attack poor people and take away their housing, leaving them with literally no place to go. Here, here. Thank you. Ting Chun Chen, T-I-N-G-C-H-U-N, last name C-H-E-N. I'm helping with the tent. Hi, my name is Jim Hendry. I live in uh, Studio 4. And if this is legal, well, then I'll move on. But if it's not legal, I don't know. Let them come to my door first. Force me out. Let them come to my door first. Real 4. That's about all. Good luck. We'll stand with you.